the future of the construction industry will include AI in some capacity. So why not be familiar with it? Don't have that head trash or that inferiority complex of like, oh, I don't understand that and I can't do that. Just try it. It's a lot easier than you think. Less stress, more time, more money. Welcome to the Cash Flow Contractor. Deep dive. Martin, we just spent about 30, 45 minutes making our own GPT. Um, right. It's awesome. Our own chat GPT. Not, we didn't sit here and code uh, a new large language model. We'll talk about that at some point, but we just used chat GPT's custom GPT functionality to create our own for article writing. I think it right. did all right. Yeah. It's pretty good. I know you got it sent to me and I'm going to spend some time this weekend uh, polishing it, but it's amazing. It's amazing. It's it pretty incredible. It's a place to start. Yeah. And yeah, I think for a lot of this stuff, it's, um, I mean, we're going to talk about different use cases, but specifically with content creation, um, even like instructions and SOPs and stuff like that, it's, it's a paint by numbers rather than a blank canvas. I think that's the biggest part for right. me is like, I don't have to do the heavy creative thinking to get just an outline going. It can get me the outline and I can then focus on just the actual substance of what's going on rather than the format and the where do I start aspect. You know, we might jump back. I kind of presume everybody in the world knows what AI and chat and GPT are, but maybe not. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's what it's always been two years now since it was really public information in terms of like you could go in and use i think it was dolly was the first one d-a-l-l-e we'll link to that in the show notes it is also done by open ai the big company that has chat gpt um and Google. that would generate images for you uh you could say paint me a picture of you know venice with a donkey in the middle of the screen and it would do it right um, and then shortly after that, ChatGPT came out and it would be able to write an article for you or send you recipes or plan a trip for you, whatever it was. Um, and that's really the big one that took off and was the fastest company, I think, to 100 million right. active users, um, which is just insane. But uh, now OpenAI has integrated the two. So now you can just go inside of ChatGPT and say, hey, make that image of a donkey in Venice for me and it does it inside of ChatGPT. Uh, and it's also a lot better. They just keep improving and improving. But um, yeah, those are, if you haven't messed with AI, uh, that's probably the biggest, easiest way to get started for free, just trying it and seeing what it's like. Uh, I'm sure that for our listeners, there's gonna be some mixed reviews in terms of what they think about AI. I think we should definitely preface this episode saying we are not experts by any means. Um, and I think that maybe even helps this conversation a little bit because we're not going to be using any fancy language. We're not going to be talking about things that are too hard to understand, but really just practical do's and don'ts uh, you know, for as AI a, for contractors. He, when you say we're not experts, uh, I'm way not an expert. You're just not an expert. I'm way not an expert. <laughs> but I like to get things real practical. Some listeners who've been hearing it's rattling around, you know, okay, I've heard it. I don't know what it's for or anything else. But the way I started was, I think it's openai.com, right? Or yeah. open.ai yeah. is the website. Oh, yeah, for... openai.com works too. Okay, so you go to that and a screen pops up and you've got to create an account. So you got another username, password, and you can use the free account. Do that. Yeah. And then there's a, uh, it looks like a browser. Uh, what what do you call the space where you type in your- uh, The URL bar? Yeah, but I mean, well, there's like a URL. Oh, like a search box? It looks yeah, like a, a search, search box. box. Search box. Yeah, just put it in there. So here's this thing looking at you and it's very uh, austere. There's not much on there. You know, it's kind of yeah, like it's a, a Google. Yeah, it's a screen basically. It's a, it's, yeah. And just say, hey- what are five things I need to tell my customer when I come out with a bid? Just something, any damn thing you want. Just yeah. say that and click the little send and you will see. 
it will start telling yep. you stuff. And now you're underway and you're an AI user and it costs you about 35 seconds. Or if you're slow like me to come up with passwords, maybe a minute. And, and it's that, and then, then we'll go on about refining it and how to use it for, but you will have started you and it's, it's amazing uh, that you start getting yeah. answers and, and you can start saying, well, that's kind of a stupid answer. And one thing you can have a lot of fun guy like me is going, you would type in there, they, they give you a response and you say, that was a stupid response. Why did you say something like that? Say it again without using all the big shot words. And it'll come back and say, oh, very sorry. I understand you don't like big words. So here, here's the same thing written, right? So anyway, mm -hmm. that's a way to literally get started. Just type in openai.com, set up an account, and then enter a question, a statement, whatever you want to do in that uh, search bar, and you're, and you're underway. You're at the yeah. very beginning, but you're underway. You are. And it's, it's really pretty straightforward. Maybe this is too elementary for some listeners. We'll get more in depth of how to actually use this in practical ways as a contractor. But um, one thing I do want to say really fast is do a brief introduction to what AI actually is um, and how it's going to kind of be integrated into tools that you use as a contractor. So artificial intelligence, AI, uh, really what's happened, what you're seeing all over the place right now is that there are large language models. An AI is a supercomputer that they call a large language model that they've basically trained to do certain actions. They've given it a ton of knowledge and the ability to learn uh, on its own. So like whenever we are using ChatGPT, we're actually teaching ChatGPT to get better. Um, it's just continually improving on itself. Uh, it's a computer that can learn. That's what you need to understand. And this large language model took a lot of time, energy, engineers to build. And OpenAI has created probably the biggest tool, ChatGPT, that we've already talked about. But they're also licensing themselves out to other companies to then use the same computer. So all the different softwares that you are using are probably already paying for a license with OpenAI. So and they're just using it in a different way. So for example, QuickBooks is licensing OpenAI, the large the artificial intelligence that they have to integrate directly inside of QuickBooks and do certain actions. And they're training the same large language model to do things inside of QuickBooks. And it's not just for QuickBooks, but it's all sorts of tools. It's inside of my, and Google has their own large language model called Baird. And Twitter just recently came out with one called uh, Gronk or Gonk. I can't remember the name is. But basically, there's, there's going to be a handful of companies that are going to have some of the most popular large language models or AI computers, and then they're going to integrate directly into different tools. Uh, they're directly co connected to the internet. So anytime an article is posted or an academic journal, they're gathering that information and, and the AI is getting smarter and smarter. Um, that's why we're seeing these huge leaps in terms of what it's able to do. Uh, so fast. Well, so, I did. I anyways. do have to mention, or dumber and dumber, depending on the quality of the academic articles. But that's just a yes. An aside. <laughs> I, hey, I listened to a podcast about that recently. But anyways, go ahead. Well, there's an old saying that a lot of people out there are educated far beyond their intelligence. That's a saying around the oil fields. No, you mentioned that. Just making it real again to people yeah. like me. You said that QuickBooks licenses. Um, an artificial intelligence and use it in certain applications. Well, if sure. you use QuickBooks, if you are a user and you see the bank feeds, you see that it tries to match up uh, who you yeah. paid. And that's an artificial intelligence function. It is. I have, to, I have to say most people would agree that it's not really great yet. <laughs> well, that's the thing is yeah, OpenAI is actually making it better. Um, right. I don't know if you've used the, some of it in QuickBooks yet, but it's go, it's a lot better. Um, it, and you can pay for additional features with AI on almost every software out there, which basically covers their license fee with OpenAI. But it's getting tremendously better. And it's not just doing things like basically how you can chat with uh, ChatGPT and ask it a question. 
you're going to be able to do that with basically every software and it's it's already applicable. I'm not in QuickBooks every single day looking at it eight hours a day. So I don't know all the functionality in QuickBooks, but I'm frequently in HubSpot, right? HubSpot is the CRM. It's where you keep right. all of your customer information, it, where you keep your deals, any service tickets. Um, you're going to have a, a, just a, so much information inside of there. And HubSpot licenses OpenAI and they created something called ChatSpot. And basically I can go into ChatSpot and I can ask, how many customers uh, did we sell a deal to for over $5,000 last year or all time? And it'll tell me exactly who it is. Can you give me a list of those? And it'll give me that list. So rather than me going and searching for that data and actually finding it, I can just chat with it and it'll give it to me. I can ask, uh, can you create an email list of people that have uh, downloaded a resource from cashflowcontractor.com and purchased from either uh, Anil BC or, or a customer of Anil BC and a customer of Benali. And it'll give me that list, right? So I can do a lot of just quick data analysis and data gathering, data collection through just chatting with the artificial intelligence. It knows exactly where to find it and how to grab it and it's ready to go. So that's like a huge benefit and time saver where now as a business owner, where previously, if you wanted to gather that information, you'd have to learn where to find it um, and make sure that it was uh, accurate, all that stuff, or even hire someone to do that for you. Now you can just ask the chat as a business owner, where is this stuff? How, what, where can you give me that list and it'll do it. So it, it's very beneficial in that regard. Um, but th these are, you know, that's, that's kind of the data analysis side. I think you, if you're a, any, this is why software is so important, by the way, if you're not using software already in your business, it's going to be much harder to get some of this, the benefits of artificial intelligence right away. It's going to take a lot of time. Like if you don't have really good books, if you don't have a good CRM in place, if you don't have a good project management software in place, if you don't have a good billing software in place. If you're not using those tools, you're going you're gonna to fall behind probably exponentially at a certain point because eventually people are only going to want to work for people that have these tools ready at their disposal. You know, if I'm a project manager and I have the option to work for company A and make the same amount as at company B, but company A has a great project management software where AI is integrated and I can get answers to questions I need and focus on doing a better job as a project manager rather than just a data collector and someone who's navigating software all day. I can just get the answers I need versus at company B where I'm doing all the heavy lifting myself and it's not, I'm not getting the efficiencies of the software with the AI. I'm, pr I'm probably gonna fall behind my career at some point because this is the future, right? It's almost like the companies that had a computer back in the day that gave you a computer as an employee and the ones that didn't, that's kind of what we're talking about. Right. So anyways, those are some thoughts there. Um, I want to, I want to move though, into just really kind of the biggest tip that I have for a, con a contractor out there is, you know, take small steps, look at things that you're already doing and ask if AI can do it. Don't sit here and try this new endeavor with AI. Oh, we're going to completely change how we manage projects and use this AI tool. It's probably not going to happen. You're still dealing with behavior change, but there are things that you're doing every single day or every week where AI can aid you uh, and can make you a little bit more efficient. That's where I would start. Um, things like drafting an email, things like, um, hey, I want to get, I'm already doing some Zoom calls with uh, customers or with employees. Let's start getting transcripts from those um, so that we can use those transcripts now, right? Like it's a, it's a simple addition to your Zoom to be able to get that. It's not like you're changing everything about how you do it. But now I've got these transcripts. Well, after we have those transcripts, we can also use those transcripts to create a follow-up email to the customer automatically based upon the meeting. Hey, thank you so much for meeting. We talked about this. Here's the action items that we have. Here's the action items that you have. Excited to, to do your project with you. Boom. Now we can send that email. It made us much better because we have it documented in our systems of the meeting. 
that took place and where you're having better communication with our customers, right? Um, another big thing is like thank you notes. That's a huge one. Um, it's, you know, writing the thank you note is really important, but sometimes that can take a long time to think about how to say the right things. You can go into ChatGPT and say, hey, I want to write a thank you note to so-and-so. I want to mention um, the how unique their project was. I want to mention uh, it was great meeting their son, Jake. It was also, uh, I'm, I want to have a dog now because their dog, Sally, was so wonderful. And then put that in ChatGPT. It'll give you a really nice thank you note that mentions all those things in a really nice way, and you just write it down. That's going to save you a lot of time and thought. Another one that I've done uh, is for fun with my sister and family. Uh, I've wrote written poems with ChatGPT where I say, hey, I want you to write a poem about my sister. Her name's Amina. She might listen to this. Hey, Amina. Um, and here's like 10 qualities about her. Make it rhyme. And then it comes up with this poem that's like actually pretty good. You know, like if I would have just written it, I was with her when I did it. But if I would have written it down and sent it to her in the mail, she probably would have cried. <laughs> so anyways, those are some examples of little things that you can do. What You've heard of some other ones too. You've got clients that are using yeah. some AI. Uh, well, one client was getting uh, uh, reviews on Google and yeah. one of them was not good. I, I might've mentioned this in a prior episode, but one of them was not good. And you really need to respond to those. You, you need to respond to everything. That's a great policy. Yeah, even the good ones. But he didn't really know what to say. So he got on chat, put her, the complaining person's one-star review notes into the search bar. It said, respond to this yep. um, using, you know, be polite, but firm and professional. Uh, don't apologize, but it leave open options that we can improve the situation. And it yeah. did that. And then he copied that and put it in the response. And this lady called him up and she said, well, uh, I can't buy from you, but I can modify my review because I understand now. Mm. Okay. So he thought that's a good idea. And I asked him about it because it's not a guy I would have thought would be writing a bot to answer his Google reviews, but he wrote a bot to answer all his Google reviews. So he, they automatically yeah. go in and he automatically rewrite a, spawn, a response that he's described. And then it's, it's taken care of. And I said, well, well, how the hell did you learn how to do that? How do you suppose he learned? YouTube. Well, YouTube, but he went to chat GPT first and how do I do this? And told him, <laughs> he said it took about 20 minutes. Yeah. And I, you know, I didn't even yeah, know what you, they were talking can, about. He just told me what to do. There's a great tool out there called Make. M-A-K-E, I think it's make.ai. Uh, we'll put it in the show notes with the right link. But basically, you can connect with Make almost any of the tools like Google My Business, uh, your Google Drive, your Gmail, um, your QuickBooks, your Project Management software, your Slack for communication, your Zoom, whatever it is, your Google Calendar, two other tools, and then it will use AI and incorporate with chat GPT or whatever to do whatever you want and automate it. So if you want to do it, uh, your client did and respond to every single customer review and you have certain instructions for five stars versus four stars, three stars, two stars, one star, then, uh, it will automate it for you just like your client did. Right. And that's, I mean, that's an example of how to yeah. do that. But you can also, what's crazy, ask the AI how to automate it and it'll teach you how. Yeah. So it, anyways. Yeah, it's amazing. Very cool. Um, we use, you know, we use, we're a little bit different. We're not in construction, obviously. We work with a lot of construction companies, but we use AI a lot. Every one of our team members is using AI. Even in fact, the editing software that we use for uh, this podcast will transcribe every single word from this podcast and then when we edit the audio we can go and mix and master and use the audio tools but we can also just simply edit from the transcript so when martin says something off color like he always yeah. does yeah we can just click literally edit the document of text and say oh we'll take out the bleep 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 and then it will it edit the, the audio it'll take that out of the audio and the video 
right? And so that's like an example of how we're using AI at here. But for me, I use a tool called Fireflies on every single Zoom meeting that I'm on. It records the video and then it gets a transcript for me and then it lists out uh, action items that uh, were mentioned. It, it, it'll recognize speech patterns. Like it, it will recognize if I'm listening, it says who's talking more. Am I doing more of the talking or is the client or the whatever guest on the call doing more talking? Um, it'll recognize like feeling statements. It'll recognize, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. And I can then connect that to my project management software and it will send over, it will add it to the, my, I have a task in my project management software for the meeting. It will add the transcript, but it'll also add tasks to that meeting of all the action items. And then I can just delete the ones that I don't want in there. So there's a lot of different things like that that you can do where it's just making it more efficient. You know, there. Um, I, I don't know. I know that it's available. I don't know the name and I don't know how to use it. But from a standpoint of theoretical versus kind of like, oh, that'd be cool. I'm going to do that. You know, uh, yeah. Automate my Christmas cards, which is valuable, but that's probably not going to happen today for a lot of guys. One thing that sure. does is scheduling. I think we had a guest on and he really nailed it when he said the two big risk points are scheduling and bidding. In other words, did I bid it right? Do I have a chance of making money? And the second one is, is my schedule even close? Because you can bid it with good money, but if your schedule's off, you'll you'll lose everything. You know, you outrun, outpace your cash flow. One thing I'm interested in understanding how it does, uh, and we don't have to answer it here, I just want to know that it's out there, is something that monitors your jobs and begins to teach you, yeah, you're right. You say that's going to take four days, but you know, we've done it 20 times now and it takes nine days, right? So you begin to learn how your scheduling works, not based on an Excel spreadsheet, but based on, on historic pack, right? That's one that really yeah. intrigues me. I don't know what that software is. I know it's out there. Maybe you know what the software is. But I want to look into that and get my clients using it because that's a huge issue. How do I schedule? Yeah. Yeah. No, the, I, don't, I don't know a specific scheduling app, but I know they're out there. I know there's, uh, you can create Gantt charts through AI where you just put in little variables and what your criteria are, it creates the Gantt chart for you. Um, I'm, one that I think on the personal side uh, that I think is really great uh, that I've started using recently because personal finances matter a lot, especially as the business owner. Um, I mean, it just, it's huge. And so Monarch is a really great tool. Uh, I think it's monarchmoney.com, but it has AI directly integrated into it. So like all the transaction categorization stuff is really helpful. But then basically it's, it's basically got like a, um, almost like a financial advisor aspect to it where you can say, where do you think I can cut the most costs in my personal budget? And it'll give you very clear information on, you know, hey, these are all your subscriptions. Do you really use all of these? Uh, it'll tell you about your, your eating habits, uh, things like that. I mean, it but just- But this is uh, very up to your bank and credit cards. Bank and credit cards. It tells you everything you need to know. It'll tell you, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's really intuitive, wonderful to, tool, highly recommend it. Um, but it's just, you're going to have a lot of the heavy lifting. Like there's so many things as a business owner that you need an advisor for, for your insurance, for your bookkeeping, for just finance in general, uh, for taxes, for uh, HR, for anything like that. And AI is going to be able to support you in those things. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to completely replace an advisor. But you have a legal question, check with ChatGPT first, right? And then maybe follow up with your attorney, right? Um, you're not sure about something tax related. I mean, all of the tax platforms now, um, what is it? I mean, like TurboTax. Turbo tax and the, yeah. TurboTax, like HR Block, they all have AI integrated on it. Um, so, you know, the things that are very structured, like 
There's a tax code that you have to follow. There's clear rules to it. It's going to be able to know those rules very clearly. The things where it's very ambiguous are a little bit harder, but if there's a strict set of rules with it, it's much easier. If there's clear data, like with Monarch Money, it's using your bank accounts and credit card statements, it's clear data, it's going to be able to do really well for you. Um, I think there are some other things that I wanted to mention that, I ha that we haven't yet in terms of using uh, AI. So with hiring, you like the content creation is the big one. We haven't really touched on that. You have to create content all the time. Um, it could be as simple as sending an email. It could be as simple as writing an article for your website. It could be as in-depth as creating a complete guide for your customers or writing SOPs in your business. But ChatGPT is really helpful at a lot of this stuff. You want to make uh, SOPs. You want to know like tasks and responsibilities for a certain role. You want to write a good job description or a good hiring ad you should be at least starting with ChatGPT to do the heavy lifting of getting an outline or a framework in place, maybe even using it verbatim at oftentimes. Um, it's going to help speed your, your process up along on that way. And the great thing is you can train your, you can even buy a course for your assistant or your office admin or someone to, to do a lot of these things for you. And you can say, hey, I need you to go in and I've got these 10 responsibilities for this new role that we're hiring. I want to get an SOP in place for each of these 10 responsibilities or these 10 tasks. Will you go in and draft those for me in ChatGPT? And then will you get them sent over to me in uh, Google Docs or Word documents and I'll revise them? And so now you're showing up for an hour and just reading through these SOPs for these 10 tasks rather than going and writing from scratch 10 right. SOPs, which would take you a very long time, right? Um, so it, and I've, I've done that personally, and it's really been so helpful because there's things that I've missed, things that I haven't thought of, um, that it's catching. So you don't need to, it's basically don't reinvent the wheel every time. You don't have to do that anymore. You can start with, you know, an axle in place and then build the car from right. there. Yeah. Getting off the blank page and getting an outline and getting some suggestions is, is the big, you're getting motion at that point. Everybody knows getting yeah. started is where all the power goes in. Once you're on a roll, you're moving. But literally, again, bringing it to specific, what kind of question would you ask? What would you say if you wanted to write a uh, SOP for a skid steer operator? I mean, literally, Maybe let's just do it that on the call one? right now. Okay. Let's do it right now. We'll go to chat GPT. So I'm going to go to chat.openai.com. I'm going to go and message chat GPT and I'm going to say, please write a job description um, with clear tasks and responsibilities for a skid steer operator. Right. And we'll Boom. just start with that real simple. What'd you get? Okay. So I got job title, skid steer operator, job type, full time. Uh, about the role. We're on the hunt for a skilled skid, skid steer operator. You'll be the go-to person for handling our skid steer loader. Think loading, moving, and placing materials. You'll work on various projects. Could be construction, landscaping, or even road work. Safety is key with our company, so you've got to be sharp and follow all of our safety protocols. Uh, key responsibilities. Operate the skid steer loader. Get in the driver's seat of our skid steer loader. Handle the controls like a pro, maneuvering in tight spaces and other various terrains. Load and move materials. Site prep and cleanup, maintenance checks, safety first, team player, record keeping. You must have um, experience, license certification, physical fitness, communication skills, nice to haves, experience in construction or landscaping, um, handy with other equipment, bonus points. We offer competitive fit pay, great team, work on cool projects, right. safety focused environment. So now what I want to say is let's do. Um, but let's, let's add, I've got a suggestion. Why don't you say be more specific? about the exact safety requirements they're going to need to understand. Specific about the exact safety requirements. Right. Should have said forklift they, rather than skid steer, but. Yeah, uh, I know. Forklift would be way easier. Yeah, a little easier. Um, and, and also the, um, the maneuvers they're responsible for. In other words, we're just trying to get more specific job to forklift operator 
be more specific to have the exact same requirements they will need to follow. And um, the maneuvers. They'll be respond that, that they'll need to know. Okay. So they've changed it to forklift operator. Um, so forklift mastery is a key responsibility. Uh, um, load and unload safety. They're, they're here's so daily equipment checks, seatbelts and safety gear, uh, follow weight limits and load capacities, keep a clean obstacle free work area, use signals and horn in busy areas. Right. So let's do please write an SOP for a forklift operator to do a complete and thorough safety check. Okay. So here we go. Standard operating procedure, forklift safety check purpose. This SOP provides step-by-step -step instructions for conducting comprehensive safety check before operating a forklift. The goal is to ensure the forklift is in safe working condition to prevent accidents and injuries. Scope, this procedure applies to all forklift operators. Frequency, safety checks should be performed at the start of each shift or whenever a new forklift is used. Procedure, pre-check preparation. Ensure the forklift is parked on a flat level surface, engage the parking brake, switch off the engine and remove the key. Visual inspection, check for any visible damage to the forklift, forks, mast, overhead gear, etc. Look for any leaks under the forklift, hydraulic oil, fuel, coolant, etc. Inspect tires for wear and pressure. Ensure the load brake backrest extension is securely attached. Verify that warning labels and capacity plate are uh, legible. Number three, forks and mast check. Examine forks for cracks, bends, or distortions. Check mast operation. Raise and lower the forklift for uh, the forks to ensure smooth, snag free operation. Inspect lifting chains and rollers for damage or excessive wear. It goes on and on. It's yeah. got seven different things. Um, and then there's a documentation for the last one. Log the safety check results in the forklift's maintenance log. Report any defects or concerns to the supervisor immediately. Do not operate the forklift if any critical issues are are found until they are resolved. Yeah. So that's a, that's about a month's worth of thinking to write that, even though that, we, we may want to reduce it, you know, synopsis. Yeah. Uh, but I yeah, mean, I the, think the point, point is, you, it's, you type that it's a into start. That more. Yes. It's a start. And if you have really big tasks that you need for your next job, go and do an SOP for each of those tasks and customize it to yourself. But that's going to give you sometimes 90% of what you need. Right. So um, I think that's a really big one that uh, you can use. There's different things here that we've talked about that I think are probably more helpful than others. Um, really, we just want to make sure that we're introducing it to people. Uh, so that they're aware because it's so common, especially in construction, to fall behind. How many construction companies do you know, Martin, that just they're not even using a CRM or they're not even oh, using yeah. their uh, software in their company at all? I mean, it's a dime a dozen. Um, there's ones that don't even have a website. They're just a little further behind. And that's okay at the end of the day because they're still getting things done. And a lot of times you can confuse having a website or having a software with getting things done. And that's not good either. But the future of the construction industry will include AI in some capacity. So why not be familiar with it? Why not be aware and at least trial it yourself, especially as a business owner or a manager of some sorts that's on the computer already. Make sure that you're incorporating that into your workflow in some capacity. Uh, and don't, I think the biggest thing is don't have that head trash or that inferiority complex of like, oh, I don't understand that and I can't do that. Just try it. It's a lot easier than you think. OpenAI.com, get an account and type your question in there and then start having fun with it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, again, we're not gurus or experts on AI by any means, but we're not afraid to try it and to start using it in different ways. In the future, you're going to be able to do complete designs of a project by just saying, I need this, these specs, design it. And it'll do it very thoroughly. And there's already tools out there that are doing some of that stuff. You're going to be able to get a complete cost analysis of your projects in the click of a button without having to do much, right? You but know, it's, this, you got to start this, somewhere. This is out there too, but we, you and I both have had a lot of cabinet manufacturers and there's design and engineering. Design is when you're building what it's going to look like and you're showing it to people. Engineering, of course, is nesting it so you can actually build it 
and the drawers don't interfere, things like that. Yeah. They can use AI to look and to look and to look and to look and to look. And so pretty soon, truly, you will be able to get your engineering done through AI. Yeah. I mean, right now it's done through RI, real in intelligence. An experienced person knows where to look and what to be suspicious of. Anything a person can do along those lines, we can get AI to do. And I'm excited for that because yeah. that's, that's a huge, you know, those mistakes that happen far down the line that weren't caught early yeah. that just wipe you out. Yeah. I saw one really cool thing uh, on Twitter, I believe. A guy used, I think it was his OpenAI chat GBT, the Dolly program. And um, he took a piece of paper and crumbled it and then just dropped it on, a pe on the table, took a picture of it, and then uploaded it to ChatGPT and said, design a building that uh, fits the style of this piece of paper. And it would create like a, like opera house. Wow. Designed that looked exactly like the piece of paper, but turned it into a building. And then so, he did it like 10 different times with like different architecture styles, like make this look like it fits in Venice somehow. Um, make this look like it fits in Tokyo. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it can, it's our limits of questions to ask and how to use it. Yeah. That's, that's, but let me ask you a question. Uh, can you just upload into the chat GPT? You can upload a picture in there just as easily oh, as. Yeah. Yep. Just so as, as easy as like, just, a, you can, another thing that people are doing this for, this is another great one. Someone sends you a PDF, um, you know, like a annual report or a slideshow or a deck or whatever it is, you can upload it and say, Hey, ChatGPT, will you summarize this for me so I can read it in three minutes rather than three hours? And it'll summarize all the key points. Um, and a lot of these things are even integrated inside of emails, inboxes. Cool. So you can do it from the email inbox, just click on the PDF and click summarize, right? Um, but you got to turn some of those features on. Some of them you pay a little extra, but I know it's inside of Microsoft and Google if those are your emails, which are probably 90% of people. So. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that reminds me of something I need to do that I look into a 65-page report looking for some data and finally gave up because I didn't have to have it. I just wanted to know it. You just gave me the idea. No, just Close. upload it into ChatGPT and ask the question. I'm going to do that and ask this one question. <laughs> Excellent. I'll do there that today. There you go. Um, cool. Well, Martin, it's okay. been fun. Um, yeah. we'll probably look back at this in a year or two and laugh at ourselves, uh, cause things are changing so fast, yeah, but talk, talk about that yeah. day that all you had to do is reach over there and flip that switch and the lights came on. You can do it. You can do it. It will work for anybody. That's great. Well, listeners, uh, if you have any use cases of AI that you think are pertinent to other contractors that you'd like to share with us. Don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to hear from you and share those with our audience. Please go and subscribe to us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you are socially. Follow us on Spotify and Apple as well to get the podcast directly to your phone each week. Uh, we can also send you our newsletter if you'd like. Just go to our website in the show notes and subscribe and you'll get notified every time we send an episode out. Thanks for listening. We appreciate your support. Have a wonderful rest of your week. See you, Martin. See you, Leo. Thanks for listening to The Cashflow Contractor. Check out our website in the show notes or visit thecashflowcontractor.com.